Hi, this is Mrs. Wiederholt, and welcome to my lesson video on transforming quadratic functions. Now let's get started. First, we must know and understand the parent quadratic function. It is f of x equals x squared. And when it is graphed, it will look like this. Remember, the vertex of the parent function is always 0, 0. Now the formula for the transformed function looks like this. It will be f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k, where h and k are the vertex. Now if you have studied absolute value functions or any other functions, the a, h, and k values should look familiar to you. Now, in functions, it's always x minus the h value. So if your h value is negative, that would be x minus negative h, which when simplified would simply be x plus h. So I always tell my students, if you see x minus h in the parentheses, that means your h value is actually positive. And if you see x plus h inside the parentheses, that means your h value is actually negative. Now, the k value, there's nothing tricky about it. If you see plus a number, that number's positive. If you see minus a number, that k value is negative. Now let's look at the a value. The a value controls vertical dilation. Now what that means is it controls how narrow or how wide your parabola is going to be. If the absolute value of A is greater than 1, then you will have a vertical stretch, which means your graph will be narrower and it will look something like this. Now if the absolute value of A is greater than 0 but less than 1, you will have what's called a vertical shrink and it will make your parabola wider, and it would look something like this. Now the reason why I have said the absolute value of A is because it doesn't matter if A is positive or negative when it comes to how narrow or how wide the parabola will be. Now the negative sign does make a difference and it determines if your graph or parabola is going to reflect over the x-axis. So if your a value is negative, your parabola will reflect over the x-axis. So a negative a value that is between 0 and 1 will appear wider. And a negative a value that is greater than 1 will appear narrower. Now let's move on to the h and k values. The h value represents a horizontal translation, meaning it will shift to the left or shift to the right. So if your h value is greater than zero, that means your parabola will shift to the right. And the new graph would look something like this. If your h value is less than zero, that means your parabola or graph will be shifting to the left. And it would look something like this. Now please keep in mind, my drawings here are not perfect. I'm literally moving it to the right, which means it should be sitting on the x-axis, or I would be moving it to the left. So I apologize that these do not sit on the x-axis. Now let's look at the k value, which represents a vertical translation, which means it will shift your parabola either up or down. If the k value is greater than zero, that means it will shift the parabola up. And it will look something like this. If you notice, it has shifted my vertex from where it was at zero, zero, up. If the k value is less than zero, that means it will shift your parabola down. And that will look something like this. 
Now let's look at some examples. Number one, which is narrower? y equals one half of x squared or y equals negative two x squared? Well remember, the negative sign here has nothing to do with how wide or narrow. The negative sign tells us whether or not the graph is reflected over the x-axis. So we are looking at one-half, which is this a value, and two, which is this a value. One-half is between zero and one, and two is greater than one. So that means y equals negative two x squared would be the narrower graph. Number two. Write the equation of the graph formed when you translate the quadratic parent function four units left and two units up. Now, the first thing you should do is write your original h and k values. In this case, for the parent function, h is equal to zero and k is equal to zero also. So if I'm going to go four units left, that means my h is negative four. So I'm going to subtract four from zero, which means my new h value is negative four. Zero minus four is negative four. Now for my k value, since it is moving two units up, that means I would add two to the original k value, and zero plus two is two. So now I have the h and k value that I need to write the equation. And also one other thing, what is the original a value? If you do not see one, remember that means a is one. It's invisible. And this example does not tell us that there is any sort of vertical dilation. So we are ready to write our equation. y equals, our a is invisible one, so we don't have to show it. And this would be x minus negative four squared plus two. Now remember, minus negative four can be simplified to plus. So here's your equation. Y equals X plus four squared plus two. Example number three. The function Y equals X plus three squared plus two is moved two units to the right and three units down. Write the equation of the newer function. Okay, first I need to look at my original a, h, and k values. Well, a is invisible one. And there is no vertical dilation, so a will continue to be one in the newer equation. Now the h value. In the original, we have x plus three inside the parentheses. So that really means it's x minus negative three. Therefore, h is negative three. Now it says we're going to move it two units to the right. So that means that's positive direction, so we will add two. So negative three plus two is negative one. So that will be our new h value. Now let's look at the original k value. It says that the k value is positive two. And then if you look here, we are to move it three units down. That means we will be subtracting three. So our new k value, two minus three, will also be negative one. So now we are ready to write the new equation. We have y equals x, okay, it's x minus negative one, so that's x plus one squared, and the new k value is negative one, so minus one. So we have y equals x plus one squared minus one. Now I hope this video has helped you to understand how to transform quadratic functions, and I look forward to working with you again. Bye-bye.